The best thing about summer coming to an end is the beginning of fall. Fall means the weather mellows out a bit. It means mine and Lauren's birthday. And it means the best season for fashion. And if you don't think fall is the best season for fashion, I guess it's okay. We all have our own opinions, I guess. <laughs> in today's video, I'm going to be talking about three distinct genres of fashion that I think are perfect for the fall time to help you improve your wardrobe. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew What It Do, and I make videos pertaining to fashion, sneakers, art, and culture on a weekly basis. That's me. <laughs> Let's set a goal of 300 likes within the first 24 hours of this video. That would mean a ton to your boy. And without further ado, let's talk about the three genres that are the title of this video. First one being Gorbcore, the second one being Japanese Americana, and the third one being Workwear. Let's dive in. Good old raisins and peanuts. That's what the GORP insignia stands for in the GORP core phrase. In the most basic terms possible, GORP core fashion really is about well made, well produced, outdoors type clothing that also has a huge functionality case to it as well. Some of the most relevant brands headlining this fashion genre are brands like Arcteryx. Oh. You wear Arcteryx? Name every mountain then. Bro, bro, can y'all let me finish the video before we get into all of this? Come on now. <laughs> Others in the genre include Hoka, Solomon, Patagonia, aka Patagucci, the North Face, and REI. The synergy between Fall and Gorpcore is really, really electric in my opinion. The weather does get a little bit colder, especially here in places like Colorado. But in my opinion, I feel like the fall is the best time to go out, hike, do those kind of things and if you live in a place where you can't hike and you you aren't in a place where nature is abundant you're in a city i think gorp core still offers a strong functionality piece to walking within a cityscape and so as things begin to get colder weather rain those kind of things the synergy between gorp core and that kind of weather i feel like is really really prominent as it gets colder we want to bundle up more we want to layer on more and i feel like gorp core especially the jackets and different pants stylings are perfect for being able to keep your body warm without allowing you to sweat too much and all the other functionality pieces that come with the different gorp core styled garments but like with anything in life there are pros and there are cons and when it comes to the GORP core genre, I want to talk to you about both of them so you understand what you're buying into if you're interested in buying any of the pieces from any of the brands that I mentioned. Let's start with the cons and let's start with everyone's favorite GORP core or GORP focused brand Arcteryx. Now living in Colorado, we have a few Arcteryx stores here and so I'm pretty fortunate enough to just drive a little bit to get to those stores. But for some people, you guys are going to be buying them from their online retail store or you're going to be buying them from maybe a multi-brand retailer. And one of the things that you'll quickly, and I do mean quickly, find out is the expensive nature of Arcteryx and other Gorp Core brands. These items are not going to be very cheap, you guys. Jackets range anywhere from $200 to $500 to $1,000 to $1,500. And that's just for, you know, what you typically are seeing on your Instagram Explore page, your Gorp Core boys, right? That expense makes the barrier to entry relatively high for some of these very, very technical garments from Arcteryx or from the North Face or from REI or from wherever right so that barrier to entry is price point you got to save up your money save up your coins sell a couple sneakers sell a couple things here or there do those kind of things in order to actually be able to afford the jacket <laughs> the second con for gorp core is the lack of congruence with other items you may have in your wardrobe already now what does this mean congruence can be replaced with the word harmony and harmony meaning the flow of the outfit I realize that a lot of times when I, you know, look at different people wearing Gorp core or wearing Gorp style jackets or clothing, a lot of times there's a lot of congruence, there's a lot of harmony, there's a lot of flow, there's a lot of, of um, cohesiveness between their jacket and their bottoms and their shoes, right? Now, if you just buy like an Arcteric jacket, I feel like if you aren't someone who has other pieces that can complement it in a less kind of... Um, 
outdoorsy setting if you're wearing it in an urban setting for fa for fashion and for style and for functionality a lot of times what you'll find is that you have to kind of really invest and buy into the brand and buy into the look and buy into you know that gorp core style to get the full function and the full aesthetic of gorp core hopefully that makes sense simply put i think you're going to need to buy a little bit more than a shell jacket from arcteryx to really get the full benefit of dressing in a gorp style but that's just my opinion i could be totally wrong and if you think i'm wrong comment why you think so down in the comment section now that i'm thinking about it the juxtaposition of wearing like an arcteryx gorp top with a more relaxed urban setting pair of jeans or something like that could really work so it could be a con it could be a pro it depends on how you style the clothes that you style now let's move on to the pros for gorp core and the first thing that come to my mind when we're talking about the pros of this genre of fashion has to be the quality of materials used the technology in the garments and just the longevity of the garments as well a lot of these pieces are super fantastic when it comes to materials used and when it comes to the quality of the technicalness of the garment whether it be you know sweat repelling or whether it be insulating whether they use gore-tex or all these other kind of features within the jackets pants hats shirts whatever it's really really functional and when, like i said whether you're in a city or you're actually out hiking you can get great use cases out of it now your boy is a native coloradan and has hiked up a 14er in his life i know you guys can you guys can be impressed that's impressive like have you ever done a 14er have you ever done something like that okay no bet so you're in the right place when it comes to gorb core information subscribe to the channel do all those kind of things if you want to see more gorb core <laughs> i'm just playing i was playing i was playing but i was listening to a or watching a video from the fashion archive and he was talking about the functionality of gorp core especially arcteryx jackets in a cityscape and it makes a lot of sense for example recently you know there was some torrential rain in new york and we'll kind of get to that at the end of the video too i have a gofundme for my boy tdr tala de rafa but anyways there was a lot of rain in the city of new york recently as, as of the recording of this video and one of the things that arcteryx jackets do and any other kind of gorp core clothing does is it helps wick away water helps not allow your items or your body to get super wet as it rains and so that's one functionality that the jackets from gorp core they just are expertly made to do such a thing you know what i mean and so there is a great functionality piece with having gorp core items in places that have a lot of rain the places that get kind of crazy wind or weather uh, places that get really cold and so if you live in a place like that uh, this this style this genre like i said for the fall is really really great and moving towards the winter now if you live in like you know california or you live you know somewhere near the equator um maybe it's not the best kind of style because it doesn't get as cold for you but that's all subjective i could be totally wrong it could get cold to you like 60 degrees could be cold for you 50 degrees could be cold for you where i'm from in colorado we get you know 10 degrees fahrenheit you know negative celsius degrees <laughs> all right drew enough with ranting back to the pros i think some of the other pros are include longevity because of the quality of the materials and the garmentry i also think that the functionality is really really there you have a lot of jackets that have multiple pockets have multiple clamps multiple areas for you to hold different items to hold your good old raisins and peanuts um, there's tons and tons of pockets for that right and it's important to note that some of the items from gorp core fashion can be found secondhand whether it be from the north face or from arcteryx there are a lot of jackets that have been kind of been circulating for a lot of years and still have a lot of great use cases out of them which speaks to their longevity but make sure you do your research you don't buy into anything that's you know been tarnished or damaged do your research find quality pieces and you should be happy with the gorp core whether you buy secondhand or if you buy brand new if you buy brand new you got that you got that dodo you got that money <laughs> okay here are a few items that caught my eye recently that arcteryx has released they should be up on the screen the first one being the gamma mx hoodie by arcteryx this is a nice little hoodie that i feel like can be worn and layered in a multitude of ways as well as the alpha ar jacket by arcteryx i like arcteryx's styling they have some good shell jackets as well the north face steep tech jackets are always really really cool um, they're very bold kind of gorp core gear and i like that about them this jacket kind of blew me away when i saw it it was something that i saw on canoe club's website and it's actually on sale right now for not my size but it's on sale and it is the junior watanabe 
caramel caramel backpack coat and this is like a backpack and a coat in one so this is really really special if you ask me something that will really draw a lot of kind of eyeballs to your outfit and also drive a lot of functionality to your lifestyle boom that's a bar right there boy <laughs> this list can go on and on and on but tell me some of your favorite gorp core jackets pants hats shirts hoodies down in the comment section if you're a gorp nerd nerd out in the comment section baby all right let's come down from the mountain and let's talk about japanese americana the genre of men and women and anybody in between <laughs> I think the best way to define Japanese Americana fashion as a genre is Japanese elevated garmentry on American classic garments, right? So it's kind of just how Japanese creatives, designers are recreating um, American classic garments. There we go. That's how I would say it. I think there are two major case studies that are really, really popular in the world right now, in the world of Japanese Americana. And those two case studies are Visvum and Capital. And as you grow up, you start to understand that the world is extremely complicated, yet extremely simple at the same time. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, then you have not reached the zenith of your maturity. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But when I think about Japanese Americana fashion, it is a very profound genre within fashion's multiple scapes. I think that as a young man growing up, streetwear, or as a teenager even, streetwear becomes kind of the dominant fashion style for people ages 13 to let's say 19. And some people stay in streetwear for from 13 all the way until 90 years old, right? And some people love streetwear. I think for others, there's a transition that happens around the age of 20, 21, 20 that happened with me where you start to look at streetwear as very very youth culture right extreme youth culture and it doesn't resonate with you as much you've matured uh, maybe you've had a girlfriend here or there and she you know is looking at you like bro why are you still wearing the whatever shoe or whatever whatever I'm not gonna name anything because everyone can wear what they want but maturity happens right and as maturity happens sometimes you start to recognize that there's more out there in the world than just streetwear and i think japanese americana is one of those frontiers that introduces a lot of young men women etc into a different kind of world different sphere of fashion but still has kind of streetwear elements to it right i think with a lot of people who are fans of Japanese Americana styling, they tend to be very passionate lovers of clothing, right? They really, really love clothing from stitch styles to fabric and materials to silhouette to shape to colors and tones. And they just they just love it to a, a level that maybe someone who's into streetwear is like, oh, that's fire. Like this, 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 uh hoodie or this shirt is fire where with japanese americana you're really really into the different kind of storytelling aspects of the of the piece or the uh the fabric like i said and for me there's something like really pure about japanese americana and we'll get to like the pros and the cons and how it fits into fall fashion in a second but for me as an american who's always been a fan of you know japanese culture i think that a lot of people will find that you know in japan and this is me just talking I'm, i could be wrong but i think a lot of you know japanese americana fashion is brought through by you know japanese individuals loving american culture as well so there's kind of a really interesting like passionate interlope between you know japanese and america and japanese american fashion but here's why i think japanese americana is a fantastic genre of fashion for the fall time some of the staple pieces include denim jackets elegant knitwear elevated fleeces and sweaters and those things to me scream the fall time it's a little bit tougher to wear those kind of items you still can and you can still like just you know toughen up and just wear them they scream fall to me they like especially sweaters and knitwear like those kind of items really really uh, resonate with fall weather as things get colder as you want to bundle up more as you want to get cozy with your man's or your woman's when we start to look at japanese americana and we look at 
Gorp Core, they have a lot of similar cons and pros, right? But for different reasons, and that's why it's really interesting to me. The cons of Japanese Americana include the price point often, a lot of the, you know, more stable, staple brands, excuse me, the Capitals, the Visvums, they are very expensive. The barrier to entry to purchase pieces from them is that you have to be well off and be able to afford some of these garments and that's why your boy does not have any garments from capital or visible <laughs> but i think price is where the cons really end for japanese americana and correct me if i'm wrong if you have other opinions comment those down in the comment section but where the pros begin for japanese americana is the quality of materials the longevity the styling to me the styling is so fluid and easy and it can be paired with so many things that speaks to versatility and you have those elements that are really really making japanese americana a very very alluring genre within fashion like Gorp Core, you can find some of these Japanese Americana items on your secondhand markets, whether it be Grailed or Depop or eBay or whatever, wherever you buy secondhand, make sure that these things are legit because I feel like Japanese Americana, especially Capital and other brands that are really popular are being replicated and just being recreated by reps. And so you have to keep an eye out for that. But other than that, I really, really think it's a great styling and a great genre for the fall. I think some great resources for you to look more into the styling would be shopping at places like canoe club looking at accounts like ray mia fuego joel and third face soldier these accounts all do a fantastic job of showcasing japanese americana and they do it in a very tasteful and beautiful way now the last genre on this list is going to be your boy's favorite genre well they're all my favorite genres. All three of these genres are really, really great. But one of my favorites is workwear. For some of the reasons why Gorp Core and Japanese Americana are hard to get into, which is the price point, this for me for workwear is one of my favorite reasons why I enjoy workwear. The price point is amenable. It actually doesn't have a, such a high barrier to entry like Gorp and like Japanese Americana. And I think that's a huge pro for a ton of people. If you want to advance your style, you don't crucify those for buying items that are a little bit cheaper, right? Because a lot of times, and for a lot of people, we're in situations where we can't necessarily afford to pay a thousand dollars for Capital or for Visvum or of eight hundred dollars for Arcteryx, right? And I think that workwear offers stylings and silhouettes that are a little bit less expensive but also don't scream this kind of corporate fast fashion machine and that's kind of where i draw the line i'm not saying that buying cheaply made things is a solution for not being able to afford expensive things right i think you can still buy well-made items within workwear's genre that something like a fashion nova or forever 21 or a pack sun or these kind of corporate fashion Shein is a really popular one right now that i just um, don't not a huge fan of but work where it doesn't really operate like those companies do and the reason why is because they've been around for so long right and now while they have kind of taken their manufacturing outside of the u.s the quality is still typically there they still have the same ingredients they just they just cook it somewhere else you know what i'm saying that's that's the way i look at it <laughs> they have the same ingredients but they cook the food somewhere else right <laughs> my favorite workwear brands are the american workwear brands so we have dickies Carhartt, Ben Davis, Wrangler. These are four brands that I have used to showcase on my channel the functionality and the kind of beauty of a lot of these pieces, right? And I've really, really done a extensive job of building this channel off of some of those workwear pieces. And I'm understanding more about fashion and I've been able to talk to you guys about fashion more because of workwear. So I have a fondness for workwear. Some of my favorite items within workwear include Dickies A74s, Wrangler Ranchers. You have, of course, double knees. You have different items such as the Eisenhower jacket. 
you have Carhartt's Detroit jacket, you have just simple, you know, Carhartt tees or Dickies tees, you have carpenter pants. And as you guys probably are listening to this, you guys are like, oh, we already know about all these things. Well, yeah, these things have been around for a long time. They've been talked about, you know, extensively, what seems like in the last kind of 12 months. And a lot of people are being introduced to these stylings through, you know, Nike Dunks and Jordan 1s and things like that, which is all good it's all good man it, there's no bad kind of aspect of fashion unless we're talking about fast fashion and the unsustainability the unsustainability of fast fashion when thinking about the pros and cons of workwear there are a few things the pros like i said are the price point i think that you still get a pretty quality garment when you buy workwear especially like from brands like carhartt my Dickies A74s have been doing fantastic. You have Wrangler, you have the jackets. I think they do a pretty good job with quality. Maybe a, a, a few notches behind and below what, you know, obviously Capital and, you know, Visvum and Arcteryx do and, and Gorpcore and Japanese Americana. But I feel like in terms of uh, what's out there in the great scope of fashion, it's above a lot of the cheaper made items, right? And that's a pro. One of the other pros I feel like for some of the pieces is the uh, wearability of them. Like for example, I talk about the dates, the Dickies 874 all the time because it's very, very wearable. They can be dressed up as slacks. They can be worn in an office space. They can be worn in a skater space. They can be worn in so many different spaces. And that is a true testament to versatility. It's one of my favorite, favorite pants for that reason. Right now, in terms of cons, there are a few cons I can see with workwear. One of them being kind of the way some workwear is styled. So the other side of the coin is, you know, while some are very versatile, I think some items from workwear, and this is kind of where I get a little bit subjective. Some of the items from workwear don't really make sense to me from a style standpoint, right? And Carhartt double knees are kind of in that spectrum. Carpenter pants are in that spectrum because while the silhouette and the fit of these pants is really aesthetic you are wearing a pant that is you know for working whether it be for painting or for doing construction or for putting down carpet <laughs> that's that's what these pants are for right and so from a stylistic standpoint for me personally while i like the silhouette of a lot of them like walking around wearing a pair of car double knees with um, a pair of sneakers i think that it's a little bit inauthentic for me and i think for other people they probably are coming to that realization or maybe they aren't maybe they love carhartt double knees and if you do by all means continue to wear your double knees there's a reason why they're a part of this list there's a reason why you know workwear is a fantastic genre because it really does offer great functionality and, and clothing for people in the fall and for a lot of people getting into fashion who like that silhouette that these clothes give off another one of the pros is that workwear can be bought pretty much anywhere whether it be vintage it's very popular in the vintage scene as you guys probably know it can be bought online um, and i think it can be bought relatively inexpensively in different stores whether it be your thrift or goodwill or arc or whatever thrift store or in whatever country you have and i know one of the things that is difficult i'll actually speak to this because i talked about other countries if you live outside of america it is relatively difficult to get some of these garments and i recognize that that is something that could also be a con right because this is a we live in a global age you know, I'm an American, I live in America, but a lot of you who watch my channel from Canada, from, from Africa, from Japan, from Switzerland, from Germany, shout out to everybody from everywhere, Sweden, Finland, shout out to everybody from everywhere. And I know that you guys are rolling your eyes, like talking about how easy it is to get workwear. Cause for a lot of people outside of the US, it's tough. $70 for some double knees or, or you know, $70 for some 874s, excuse me. You know, $200 for some double knees. I don't know if it's worth it to that level, right? It's worth it at the price point it is in America. So that's something that you should take into consideration when you are looking to buy into workwear. When you're looking to buy into workwear, a lot of times, like for example, there are like French chore jackets. Those are really beautiful, beautifully done. Maybe you can find those in your region of the country. There are other types of uh, workwear jackets, pants that you can look into that I feel like can adhere and acquiesce to your style and to the fall time for you. And if you're in like the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sorry, if you watch this whole video and you're in the Southern Hemisphere and you're moving from winter to spring, you get a fist pump, bro. Like for real, like fist pump the screen real quick. Boom, word. 
I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Those are the three genres that I wanted to introduce to you guys or talk about a little bit for the fall time. Like I said, we have Gorpcore, we have Japanese Americana, we have Workwear. If you got any value out of this video, give it a like. And if you stay to this point in the video, bruh, I appreciate you, man. I like, I really, really appreciate you. Hopefully you're having a good day today. Like talk to me, you having a good day? Like what happened today? Like you had school today, you had work today, a word? Oh, it was, a, it was a bad day? Oh, okay. Oh, but then it, it got better, didn't it? Okay, worry, worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Another another fist bump right there. You feel me? <laughs> By the time you see this video, I will actually be in New York with Lauren celebrating her birthday. So that should be a lot of fun. And I want to talk about something really quick because I know New York just got hit with incredible, incredible flooding. And one of the brands I've mentioned before in the past is Tyler De Rafa and it's abbreviations are TDR and, and Tyler and Rafa. He has a studio in New York and it got completely flooded out. It got completely flooded out, man. So if you're in the New York area dealing with flooding, if you're around the world dealing with earthquakes or flooding or hurricanes or fires or whatever, you know, my prayers go out to you for sure um and you know hopefully we can Im have impactful change and, and you know help stop crises like this from happening with infrastructural improvements and etc cetera, etc cetera. but talking about tdr there is a gofundme that i want to share with you guys this man works incredibly hard incredibly hard and i don't really know him personally i've only had a few conversations with him over the internet but i feel like it would be remiss of me to not talk about his gofundme if you want to support recreating a studio completely completely flushed out it's like I'm, imagine my room just completely being the room i'm in right now imagine it can being completely flooded to like three feet i would lose books i would lose shoes i would lose um computers i would lose equipment all those things are more a loss for my man and so if you can spare ten dollars five dollars one dollar to help support him it would mean a lot to me and if there's any other causes or things happening, whether it be New York or around the world, uh, let me know about them because I'd love to bring those things up in videos and let, you know, more people know what's happening and how they can help. We all need help, man. We all are going through different things in our lives, whether it be emotionally, whether it be by the weather, whether it be work and school, we all we all need to support each other in, in times of, of grief. That's the human community, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm just gonna be a vessel for that. So that'll be down in the description. With that, as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2021. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Abianto. Peace.